welcome dear students uh, welcome to 10 film technology course lecture number 32 uh, in this lecture uh, we will uh, discuss uh, about uh, the epitaxy and uh, this will be some sort of the introduction lecture about epitaxy and be remember this is the part of common deposition method for thin film and ic fabrications i am dr Pervez Ahmed. so let's start today's lectures with the introduction to epitaxy so uh, what is epitaxy? Uh, I mean, what's, what's the formal introduction or formal definition for the epitaxy? So, uh, epitaxy refers to the method uh, of depositing a monocrystalline film on a monocrystalline uh, substrate. I mean, uh, this is somehow uh, a very formal uh, introductions or definitions of epitaxy. Let me repeat it again. Uh, what is mean by epitaxy? Uh, what, is, uh, what is epitaxy? Uh, 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 epitaxy refers to uh, the methods of depositing uh, a monocrystalline film on a monocrystalline uh, substrate. I mean, the substrate may be of your choice. Normally, we utilize uh, a silicon substrate. So, uh, uh, the word uh, epitaxy basically comes from uh, the Greek's uh, language or from the Greek's. Uh, I mean, uh, we have two sections of this word that is uh, uh, FE, uh, which means above, and uh, taxes, uh, which means an other's manner are to arrange upon. I mean, so, uh, the epitaxy, uh, let me repeat it again epitaxy is basically the combinations of two words uh, that come from the Greeks. So, epi. The first word epi is basically from the Greeks that stand for the above and taxes uh, is mean an ordered manner that is to arrange upon. So this is uh, I mean uh, the more formal meanings of the word epitaxy. It's a Greek word and stand for uh, the above uh, layers uh, that has been arranged in an ordered manner. Uh, Auto epitaxy or uh, uh, homeo epitaxy. Uh, what is that? Uh, auto epitaxy or homeo epitaxy is basically the extensions of the substrate lattice uh, by the over, uh, overgrowth of a layers of identical materials. Uh, that is, uh, for example, uh, uh, when one grows silicon on the silicon substrate or gallium arsenide on gallium arsenide substrate. Uh, with no problem of compatibility or uh, mismatch. Let me repeat it again. Uh, what is mean uh, auto epitaxy or a homo, a homo epitaxy? So, uh, uh, this is basically the extensions uh, of the substrate lattice by the overgrowth of a layer of identical materials. The example of which is uh, the growth of silicon and silicon substrates are gallium arsenide or gallium arsenide substrate with no problem of compatibility or mismatch. Similarly, we have a uh, hetero uh, which means that uh, we have any two materials of different crystalline structures and orientations. For example, we have uh, 001 gallium arsenide on uh, 001 silicons or uh, 001 silicon on uh, sapphire. I mean, th this is uh, uh, or what we call the uh, hetero epitaxy. So these are the three terminologies related with the uh, with the epitaxy. So what is mean by epitaxy, auto epitaxy, and hetero epitaxy? I think now you will be able to uh, differentiate between the uh, three these three uh, terminologies. So here you can see a formal. I mean the definition that we have done. I mean, you can easily understand the concept of the epitaxy. I mean, we have a substrate. Uh, this is, you can see that. Uh, this is the initial substrate. So here, uh, we are going for the epitaxy. That is, uh, we have the atoms. Uh, they are coming and they, they, they are making the layers at the top of uh, this substrate. I mean, here, uh, you can see by yourself. And here, we have the layers. That is the epi layers. Uh, and you, you can see it here. Uh, is the epi layers uh, that's been deposited at the uh, the top of the substrate here you can see that uh, the arrangement of the atoms uh, i mean uh, is uh, is according to the definitions that we have done here so uh, hetero epitaxy conditions uh, what are the, the the conditions for the hetero epitaxy just we uh, define in the, the previous slide and you can also observe here uh, that is we have aluminium gallium nitride uh, film on the 
gallium nitride surface. Similarly, we have film that that's grown on the uh, gallium arsenide, so film that's grown on the silicon substrate. So, uh, in this particular structures, this particular micrograph, uh, you can see a match lattice parameters between the layer and the substrate. Uh, that is not, uh, I mean, uh, what it means is mean that it's not a serious problem. So, uh, what's, the, what's the conditions that we have for the heteroapotexy? Uh, so, the heteroapotexy conditions include uh, substrate uh, must be physically and chemically anchored to the growth environments and being prepared with the damage free surface. I mean, this is the first conditions uh, that, uh, that should be uh, utilized for the uh, heteroapotexy the, the hetero uh, for heteroapotexy uh, the first condition is that a uh, substrate must be i mean the substrate uh, any type of substrate that we want to uh, utilize uh, during the heteroapotexy uh, so the first conditions that must be uh, fulfilled by the substrate is that that it should be uh, physically and chemically anode i mean it should not react with the depositing materials uh, and uh, uh, the condition is that uh, it should be anchored to the growth environment and being prepared with the damage free surface. I mean, there we shouldn't have, uh, I mean, a surface which is being damaged by some chemicals or being, uh, uh, I mean, uh, with uh, some impurity. Uh, the second uh, condition is uh, the chemical compatibility between the materials. Uh, to avoid compound formations or massive uh, uh, dissolutions of one layer by uh, the other layer. I mean, this is the second condition. The first condition is physically and chemically anodes. Uh, the second condition is chemical compatibility uh, between the materials uh, to avoid compound formations or massive uh, dissolutions of one layer uh, by the other layer. So the third condition is uh, uh, Match thermal expansions, uh, uh, match thermal expansion characteristics between the layer and the substrate are uh, to avoid excess uh, stress upon cooling. I mean, this this is particularly important for, uh, I mean, the excess stress upon the cooling. Uh, that is mean formations of dislocations at the interface or even a breaking of the substrate. So this is very important uh, regarding the. Uh, I mean, the, regarding the thermal expansions of the matches and the uh, substrate. So this is how, I mean, uh, we, we have the conditions for the hydroapotexy uh, condition. And you know that what actually we mean by hydroapotexy that we just explained in the previous slide. So strain and unstrains. Uh, so here you can see that we have uh, schematic, we have uh, schematic illustrations for uh, strain and unstrained uh, substrates. So here you can see uh, we have at number A, we have a substrate uh, with the lattice mesh match. I mean, there here you can see that it's a substrate crystals uh, with the lattice uh, with the lattice match. Uh, then we have this substrate crystals at number B. Uh, we remember it's been strained. Uh, it's been strained. And then we have uh, this at number C. We have another substrate crystals. And it's been relax uh, heteroapotexial structure. So, homeoapotexy is structurally identical to the lattice, uh, ma uh, lattice match uh, heteroapotexy. So here you can see that uh, we uh, deposit uh, an apotexial layer uh, and all the substrate. I mean, uh, here you can see that uh, we have different type of the uh, the substrate crystal that is uh, lattice mesh match strained and relaxed heteroapotexial structures and uh, we deposit uh, uh, an epi layers an epi layer of the same uh, layers of the uh, the same or different kinds on the substrate so here you can see that uh, in the case of the lattice uh, lattice match uh, we get a lattice uh, match uh, structures and that you can observe here I mean, we absorb this epi layer, uh, epitaxial layer on the substrate crystal, uh, which has a lattice mesh match. So at the end, we get the lattice mesh match and the final structure as well. Uh, in here, uh, again, we deposit ep epitaxial layers uh, on the substrate crystals, which has a strains, 
and here you can see that uh, we get the strain uh, even in the final uh, product I mean here you can see that uh, I mean we get, we, we get this sections uh, that's exactly uh, matches with the uh, initial substrate I mean here this is this has been the strain uh, uh, substrate crystal so here you can see that this strain uh, sections can be uh, visualized uh, very easily so just like that we can have uh, the lattice a match so here you can see that it's almost almost identical uh, to the final one I mean here you can see that we have the empty one so the empty one is almost look like uh, I mean the one that's been filled by the uh, epitaxial layer but here if you have a close look, uh, close look here so the strain uh, and a strain structures uh, the epi layers I mean here the place where the epi layers been deposited uh, so this kind of structures, uh, I mean, you can see that here the arrangement of the atom. Uh, this is different than from the above ones, uh, which is still empty. I mean, it's still to be deposited. So here you can see that uh, these structure is almost, almost. Uh, I mean, it's a square. So here you can see that uh, the lattice parameters. Uh, I mean, it's almost equal. But here you can see that here we have the uh, almost the rectangle structures. So what happened in the uh, uh, relaxed heteroepitaxial structures? I mean, we if we have a crystals like this, so we, so we, we apply the conditions. We deposit in every layer structures. So here you can see that uh, we get uh, uh, we get the the structures that is uh, unstrained. I mean, here to this particular point, you get almost almost the I mean the square. Uh, I mean the lattice uh, parameter that is uh, almost a square. I mean all the lattice parameters. Uh, that is a and b they, they, they are they, they have the same magnitude but if we look at the above i mean we don't uh, where we don't have the the, the epitaxial layers uh, deposited so uh, here you can see that uh, we have some sort of the defects uh, in the structure so this side of the phenomena uh, this other structure we call that unstrained so one thing is very clear i mean here you can see that i mean the epi layers that's been deposited the crystals uh, in all these cases, uh, I mean, you can easily observe that uh, the deposited epi layers will almost, almost look like the same. But the, the, the empty uh, locations, uh, the empty location is only identical in lattice match. But it's difficult, uh, it is different in the strains uh, and unstrained. But in case of the strains, you can clearly, uh, in the case of the unstrained, you can clearly, clearly observe the defect, uh, the defect structure. What kind of defect is those? I leave it for you and you have to understand that what kind of defects are these so this is a, uh, some sort of explanation for the strain and unstrained uh, conditions uh, during the diffusion of epi layer so uh, a strain layer uh, uh, super lattice uh, the example of which is uh, you can see it here uh, I mean uh, we, we have some particular example of the strain layer uh, super lattice so what actually happened in this particular conditions uh, a strain layer uh, super lattice uh, in some uh, some devices we need uh, repeated uh, regular alterations uh, alternations between the two monocrystalli we remember why and for what conditions we need a uh, strain layer super lattice i mean first we have to answer this question so the the, the, the sample answer for this question is that uh, in some devices we need repeated uh, regular alternations between the two monocrystalline so what actually we do for this uh, with these structures uh, we can alter the basic physical properties of the materials i mean uh, we need this one and this we need for war because with these structures we can alter the basic physical uh, the basic physical properties of the uh, materials so how we can change and why we can change uh, because the layers are sufficiently thin the lattice mismatch is accommodated uh, by the uniform strain in the layer and uh, the new lattice uh, will have an equilibrium lattice constant b uh, such that uh, a1 is greater than b and b is greater than a2 uh, for uh, conditions a, a1 is greater than a2 so this is the practical example of the silicons uh, I mean uh, uh, germanium silicon crystals or 
the positive and the salive can uh, and here's these all the, these conditions being explained here I mean we have thin uh, uh, mismatched layers uh, and uh, you know that from this uh, we're trying to get what uh, I mean this is the advanced uh, the lattice parameter one for a substrate and this is the a2 uh, I mean the arrangements uh, uh, I mean uh, something like a lattice the lattice arrangements uh, with the lattice constant a2 uh, and this is something like a thin uh, mismatched layers uh, all these they are thin mismatched layer so we try to make a super lattice that is uh, mismatch accommodated by either strains and uh, you know that how we get uh, we're saying that we can proceed toward the super lattice uh, that's mismatch accommodated by the strains by applying the condition that is uh, the new lattice uh, will have an equilibrium uh, lattice constant b uh, that we have here or b uh, but it should follow the condition such that a1 should be greater than b and here you can see that uh, this is the a1 the last the lattice constant a1 it should be greater than b uh, here this is the b and the second condition is uh, b should be greater than a2 so here you can see this is uh, the lattice constant a2 and this is the lattice constant b and you can clearly visualize here that lattice constant b it is greater than the lattice constant a2 and the other condition is uh, that is a1 should be greater than a2 so here again you can see that uh, this a1 uh, a1 is greater than a2 so the all the conditions that are being fulfilled so that's how uh, we can form the strain uh, uh, the strain layer so super lattice and so we also explain the conditions that for uh, under what condition we uh, we need a super lattice or a uh, strain layer super lattice so that's all we have for this lectures uh, thanks for watching uh, see you in next lecture with further details about uh, thin film depositions uh, for IC fabrications. Bye bye.